I cannot wait to show you the brand new, feature-packed, mind-blowing editor from Riverside. You now get color-coded speaker labels, the ability to remove and move sections around your recording, import content from your computer or other studios, place it wherever you would like along the timeline, add chapters and download those timestamps to use in your podcast host, and all the great transcription-based editing you know and love. So let's jump in and see all the new features of the Riverside Editor. I've logged into my Riverside account and I'll view recordings and I'll go to a past recording because all these features are available even on older episodes. Down at the bottom, you can still download the high quality raw video files or sync video files for every guest and the raw uncompressed wave audio. Click download all to save those files to your computer. And of course you could download a text version or SRT formatted version of the transcript to use for things like YouTube captions or in Final Cut and Premiere. But the real magic is in the new Riverside editor. I'll click the purple button in the top right corner and you'll notice things look a little different. Many of the tools you're accustomed to are now on the right-hand sidebar, and we'll get to those in a moment. We still have the ability to reformat your content if you want to go 9x16 vertical, 1x1 one one square, or 16x9 widescreen. And our magic tools are up at the top, like removing all silences in one click. Now on the left-hand side, you'll see that every guest is color-coded. Nate is in purple here, and I'm in green. And those colors are also reflected down here in the timeline. So when I'm zooming in to make precision edits, I know exactly who's talking when just by looking at the color-coded waveforms. The search box for the transcript is here in the upper left corner, and I can search for a word or phrase and see all the results here in the transcript. And if I scrub over the search results down here in the timeline, I'll see who spoke it and the context plus the timestamp. Now I can edit my content and the transcript just by selecting words or phrases. If I want to remove it, I click delete, and now that section is gone from the transcript. When you delete a portion from the transcript, you'll see the word striked out here, and down here in the timeline, it's also grayed out. If you'd like to hide any portions you've deleted, go up to the Show Deleted toggle and toggle that off. It will now remove any sections you've deleted and replace it with a little icon that if you click it, you can restore what was there. You can also go back to Toggle On and see all the portions that were deleted. This also applies down in the timeline. I'll zoom in where you can see the grayed out area of what's been removed. You can also precision edit your content by clicking and dragging the in and out points here to make sure that edit is perfect. If you toggle off the Show Deleted option, then it will remove that section from the timeline as well. Zooming in really far, you'll see that little line showing us that there's deleted content present. I'll toggle it back on, and really looking closely at the waveforms, you can see the content still here and what's deleted, and really drag that in and out point exactly where you want it. Same thing here for the out point, you see it's a little early, so I can drag that out, and now it's the perfect edit. Or if you need to correct the transcript, select a word, click correct, then you can type your correction, and now that's changed in the transcript, and in the captions that will be overlaid on the video. I can enable captions by clicking captions on the right hand side, choose the style I would like, and it's corrected in captions as well. You'll also notice we've automatically generated chapters throughout your recording. If you'd like to move any of these chapter starts, you can just click and drag on the dots on the right hand side and move this chapter exactly where you want it to begin. You can rename each chapter by clicking the three dots and clicking rename. You can also add chapters down here in the timeline by moving the playhead and then clicking the add chapter button here. Click the three dots to rename it, and you can see the new chapter here in the timeline, and it shows up here in the transcript. Now let's say you want to move the chapters around and rearrange your content. I can just click and drag on the chapter, and it moves the entire section just with a drag and drop. Did I just blow your mind? Watch again, if I want to rearrange my content, I just click and drag the chapter name, and it moves both the chapter and the content associated with it. Now if I want to delete a chapter, I can select Remove Chapter, and it actually leaves the content underneath. But if I want to remove a chapter and the content associated with it, I can click the three dots and then delete content, and both the video, audio, and chapter name are now gone from this recording. You can do the same here in the transcript by clicking the three dots and then delete content, and it will all be removed from this clip. You can also copy, paste, and remove sections by selecting the text. Here I'll select an entire paragraph from my co-host, click the three dots in the contextual menu, and I can choose keep only this, will delete everything else in this clip but the text I've selected. That's great for creating short vertical clips. I can create a new edit that will just include the text I had selected, or I can select text, click the three dots, and then cut it here. It will remove that section. You'll see it grayed out down here in the timeline as well. I'll click earlier in the transcript, click the three dots, and then choose paste. Now that entire section of audio has been moved by copy and pasting the text. You can cut it to remove it where it is and paste it somewhere else. You can copy and paste it elsewhere and even duplicate it right here in place. And you'll see here down in the timeline, I have these two identical sections. 
and I can click and drag them wherever I would like. Like always, editing with Riverside is non-destructive, so if you wanted to start from scratch with all of your content here in the timeline, just create a new clip and you're good to go. You can also split sections and move them without creating new chapters. Here in the timeline, I'll move the playhead and click the split command in the bottom left. I'll split this a few times, and now I can rearrange the order of this content just by dragging and dropping. And that's all happening within a chapter. But that's not all. If you click the plus button in the bottom right corner, you can now upload content from your computer or choose from other recordings in your Riverside Studios and place them anywhere in the timeline. Yes, not just the beginning and end, but anywhere you would like. For instance, maybe there's some audio we want to add. Maybe it's a sponsor break or ad. I can upload that audio. It will be added here at the end of the timeline, but I can click and drag it wherever I would like in my recording. Not only can you upload external content, but I can pull in other complete recordings from my Riverside account or import specific edits that I currently have in draft status. I can pull in this three minute recording I did another day. It will be added to the end of the clip and you'll see the transcript from that other recording is also imported. You can see the first recording, here's me and Nate in green and purple. And then this recording I just imported has my name in blue. And of course I can drag and drop this wherever I would like along the timeline. And even that imported content from another recording it will bring over the chapters that were automatically generated with Riverside. And you can still edit by a transcript from this additional recording here on the left hand side. Now you'll see I have an imported clip, another edited draft for a few minutes, and a full second episode all right here in the same timeline with the chapter markers and the full transcript from all the recordings. I know, it's getting a little out of control. And yet there's more. I still have all the incredible formatting tools here on the right side. You'll see the multiple clips that I imported, the two full episodes and the shorter recording. I can check or uncheck whichever ones I would like included in this clip. I can choose just to use the audio from any of these tracks. I can reorder if I want someone different on the left or right. I can still adjust the layout, keep the aspect ratio of the video. I can use the full frame AI to focus on the active speaker at all times. Use the shared AI layout where the non-active speaker will be in picture in picture or split the entire frame. Of course, change the style of my captions, the font size and color. I can add a background image, either upload a custom image myself or choose one of our background images here and even add a logo that I've uploaded previously or add something new. Now, once you've edited your content just how you'd like, I can click the three dots above the transcript, download this version of the transcript with all the changes I've made, the SRT format of the transcript, or I can copy it all to my clipboard. And you'll see this transcript includes both full episodes that I imported, the clip, everything that I had in my editor is here in this transcript. I can also choose just to copy the chapters list, and this will just give me the timestamps and chapter names that I created. Using these chapters and timestamps is really useful for your podcast host. For example, here in Transistor, my podcast host, this also works in Buzzsprout. When I create a new episode, there's an options to import chapters manually via timestamp. If I paste the timestamps I had in Riverside, this will create chapters in my audio content for my podcast RSS feed. And if you're uploading your video podcast to YouTube, copy and paste these timestamps and chapter names here in the video description, and YouTube will generate those chapters for you. Once you have everything edited, click the share button in the top right corner. Of course, you can export up to 4K video quality, normalize the audio level so everyone's the same volume, remove the Riverside watermark here, and you're ready to export. And in just a few minutes, you can download this video file to upload to YouTube, Spotify video, and you've done it all with the Riverside editor. With these changes, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to edit your content quickly via the transcript, AI tools like removing silences, importing other clips. This way you can get your content ready to go all inside the Riverside editor. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below this video. I answer all of those personally. And if you'd like to see how you can use all of these features for audio only content like a podcast, check out this video above or the link is in the description. And believe it or not, there are even more features coming from Riverside. I wish I could tell you, but I can't. So subscribe to the channel because then you'll be the first to know every time a new feature launches. Now, if you're looking to launch a podcast, but you're not sure where to start, I have an entire step-by-step -step walkthrough. You can check out that video here. And if you'd like some tips on getting your podcast ready for every app like YouTube Music, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, I have an entire video on that. You can check it out above here. We hope you enjoyed the brand new Riverside editor and love to see what you create using Riverside. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.